sit down. Come here. Sorry. Sit down. My dog is not cooperating and she's... Oh, well, my dog's already asleep. Is she? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Oh, can you send me a photo right now? Yeah, hold on. Oh, should I send you a photo of mine? Oh yeah. You never send me pictures of Florence. Yeah, I know, because she's old and boring. Oh my god, her paws are so pink. Oh, my dog is so photogenic. I'm sorry. Yeah, your dog is very photogenic. No, 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 sit. Sit down, sit in your place. I mean, she kind of looks dead. <laughs> my dog's got cataracts. Oh, does she actually? Or does yeah, she just look like, like it? No, it's like blue in there, so that's not normal. Oh, Florence. I mean, she is old. Are you sending me oh a picture? Oh god, your dog does look dead. <laughs> I know, well she's just fast she's asleep. fucking huge. I'm sorry, Kitty. I have so many. Because like she's just been spayed, which they did oh, not right. tell me. I'm sorry, I have well, so many things to say so about this fucking foster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just sending you a picture of my dog. Okay, yeah, send me a picture of Florence, and then why is it taking so long? Oh, I'm picking. I took a for you. Um, yeah, so I have a new foster dog this week. <laughs> Um, I decided to, well, they emailed me. I have two different shelters that I'm fostering with and I'm doing the other shelter. So it would be cool to compare the kind of like foster process. Um, so far it's definitely been very different. Oh my God, hold on. I've got the pictures of Florence. <gasps> she's so cute and she's on your lap. Oh, kids. I really do love a tricolor. Uh, me too. I, I call it, she's, I know. It's my favorite coloring in a dog. Can we just... Could you see that point in the first photo of her elbow and that little patch of brown? <laughs> yeah. That's my favourite part of her whole body. Oh. She has really nice colouring. Oh, Quite grey so around cute. the face now, though. Sorry, talk, continue talking about your foster. Well, I voice noted you a little bit when I was on my way. So, like, when I fostered Bitsy with the first shelter, they, I mean, they usually get dropped off in Jersey and then people would like drive and meet them at the service station. And because we don't have a car, they had a volunteer drive her to us, which I feel like was nice and definitely more convenient. Nice. Not that I'm saying that it should be convenient because I know I'm volunteering to do this, but like, I just feel like this adoption event was happening and then they give the new fosters the new dogs. And it's like, it's mm -hmm. in Madison, well, it's right by Madison Square Park. It was so crowded. There were so many tourists. I feel like it must have been so overwhelming for the dogs. And then it's like, yeah. <laughs> first of all, they emailed me and they said, hey, would you like to foster Angel? She's 30 pounds and she's a Pyrenean mix. And I was like, okay. And then I saw the picture. She does not look 30 pounds in the picture, right? She's bigger. She looks huge. And then when I got her yesterday, I was like, oh my God, there's no way this dog is 30 pounds. She's Labrador size. Wow. Which is what? Like well, they 50? obviously just want you to take her. I know, but I and specifically never said, want to take big dogs. I specifically yeah. said though that my building only allows dogs up to 30 pounds. And so, I mean, like what if I'd gotten that and then seen her and been like, this dog is not 30 pounds. Like I can't have her in my building. Yeah. Obviously, like even when they told me she was 30 pounds and then they saw her come out, I feel like they were like, oh God, that dog is not 30 pounds. She is the size of a Labrador. She's like a yellow lab. Yeah, she is. I mean, she's really cute. I mean, I'm annoyed about that. And then it's like, because I'm in the city, like I'm not gonna take her on the train because she can't fit in a carrier. And she hasn't had her boosters. So she can't really walk in the street for long because, you know, she could get like parvo or, what, or whatever so she like can't yeah. talk to other dogs she can't be in the street for long so then i'm like i'm standing there i'm trying to order an uber and there's like all these tourists and like people trying to touch her and like other dogs trying to come up to her and then they also give you a fucking welcome pack and a fucking paper bag and it's heavy it's got food okay I, it's nice that they give you a welcome pack but it's like an extra thing to carry along with like a giant dog and trying to order an uber it was just like it was insane and so stressful that is very stressful I'm, i can't believe you got an uber with a dog i didn't think they were allowed to do that well i mean i messaged Oh my God, that's another thing I have to tell you. <laughs> I was on the Uber app and I like sent them a message saying I have a dog, is that okay? And two people turned me down. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, fucking assholes. And then one person just didn't reply. And then it's when a, I got... Um, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh. 
<laughs> when I actually got in the Uber, I, I was like, oh, thank you so much. I had two other Ubers turn me down because I had a dog with me. And he was like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I didn't answer you because I just wanted to see what type of dog it was first. And I was like, oh, OK. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Like if it's a small dog, maybe they would say yes. But like, just text me that. Mm. And then he was, and then he started saying stuff about pit bulls, and I was like, Gina, just keep your mouth shut because you just need oh, to get shit. home, and I'm not going to stand and wait for another Uber. Because he was like, Yeah, if it was a pit bull, I I would have like driven off, and I was <gasps> like, Oh my god, <laughs> that's insane. And I obviously said like, you know, like pit bulls are actually really sweet, and it does just depend on like the owner and the training. It's not, it's not the breed. And he was like, yeah, but you know, you just, you can't be too careful. Like I hear about so many pit bulls like being aggressive. And then he said he even crosses the street when he sees a pit bull. And I was like, I was biting my tongue so hard. And it really pissed me off because like, I'm not saying it's like the same as race, but it's like a little bit similar. You know how like there are stories of like taxi drivers driving off because they don't want to like pick up like black men or something. So I was kind of like, well, that's like so prejudiced against a pit bull. And then, like, you're mm. saying you would drive off without a pit bull. That's crazy. Yeah. So that really annoyed me. Yesterday was he so stressful. Right what? I said he can fuck right off. Yeah, he can fuck right off. But I just needed to get home, and I didn't want to wait for another Uber. And it was the longest Uber ride. She was so cute, though. She fell asleep in my lap. Oh, cute. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, God. I have so many things to say about this fostering thing. So, like, they didn't tell me beforehand. She's just been spayed. She's still on antibiotics. So, I have to give her antibiotics. Oh, my God. How? And pain medication. (laughs) They're tablets. Right. I mean, like, luckily, I have experience doing that with Roscoe. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, like... I've obviously had a, like, Roscoe was half Pyrenean, so she mm-hmm. has, like, the slobbery chops, so mm-hmm. I know that, like, after you give them a tablet, you have to check their chops, because sometimes, like, the tablets get stuck in the side of their mouth, but, like, someone yeah. else wouldn't know that. Yeah. Well, that's really bad management for muddy paws, then. I mean, but I do like how they run their social media. I think they oh, have good you know, branding. It's not social media. <laughs> I know, I know it's not. They have great branding, and I do like that they, like, on adoption events they will post who's adopted so at least it won't be like a bitsy situation where I don't know where she went or if she got adopted yeah okay I'm done with my little foster rant sorry no it's fine rant away you say rant I say rant which one's American sometimes I say American words and I hate it I don't think Americans say rant do they say rant or rant maybe they say rant no they don't Gina I think you just you're just weird Oh, God. Sorry. Rant? No! I feel like rant is American. Rant. I think oh, both I are don't wrong. Know. Okay, bye. Um, so basically... <laughs> yeah? Oh, my dog is fucking quivering. Can you just come here? It's, yeah. It's um, that time of the day. Oh. S-U-P-P-E-R. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to have a sip of my coffee. Okay, fun. Oh, it's gone cold already. Um, yeah, so we do have a theme. The theme is coffee and beagle. But actually, we can talk about coffee. I've got yeah. coffee news. <laughs> What's your coffee news? That the blonde roast in Starbucks is actually really nice. And it's like controversial that you don't agree with me on this. Well, I think it's because I've had the espresso shot, but I haven't had it in a drink. Well, okay, I'm telling you, put it in your white chocolate mocha tomorrow please try it a blonde white chocolate mocha why is it better it's just something about it oh she might like it it's quite sweet i liked it Mm, i just didn't like the espresso it tasted very like citrusy i like a nice strong coffee that tastes i don't know what the taste is like not oaky do you know what i mean no like a real roasty flavor that's what i like flavor yeah okay well i like my thing sweet so I know. I was all about it. Well, yeah. I just love that we bond over a white chocolate mocha. Fucking hell, I love it so much. I, can't, I literally I know, it's the best drink. Up in the morning. Tomorrow, I'm going to have, like, two. I'm going to get one in the morning and then get one at the airport. <laughs> so oh, my excited. God, yeah. It's essential to have one at the airport. Okay, okay, so this episode is Coffee and Beagle. And it's an it's a weird episode choice because I feel like neither of us really are interested in beagles. Um. Yes, but those could be prejudices. Prejudices? Is that the right one? I don't know. Do you know, I don't have a prejudice against them. I'm just not interested. Well, 
I just, I mean, I know that they're supposed to be like really barky dogs, so I'm not oh, into really? that. Do you have any experience with beagles? Honestly, no. My cousin used to have a beagle, and she was just very overweight and like dopey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Justin loves beagles, so I feel like at some point I will probably own a beagle, so I probably should take some interest. That, that's because very Justin, interesting. what? Where does his love of beagle come from? Oh, he had a beagle, a beagle mix. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he's, I don't know, he's just very into the breed. And if he has to put up with a borzoi, I can put up with a beagle. Yeah. Ooh, a beagle and a borzoi would be a weird mix of, like, dogs, though. Yeah, I know. But remember there was that one Instagram account? I'm so obsessed with it because it has, like, your favourite breed. What was it, like? Dalmatians and borzois. Yeah, it's like a Dalmatian, a borzoi, and there's a picture of it with a beagle, too. And I was like, oh, God, all our favourite breeds together. I saw a beagle earlier outside Boots with an old man, and um, a Bichon Frise walked past it. And it was desperate to get to the Bichon Frise. Yeah. But the Bichon Frise was being pulled away. And so the beagle was like quite sad and his tail was down. And I did think to myself, like, that is a nice dog. And I don't understand why I'm not obsessed with them because they're tricolored, which is like my thing. Oh, I know. But I think it's like, they're quite like chunky. I'm just not a fan of the droopy eyes. Yeah, they kind of have droopy eyes. So I have experience with beagles because my great aunt has only ever had beagles half her life. And um, as much as I love her, they have all been so fat and gross. And so it has turned me off them and smelly. And she used to let them, I feel like my dogs are having issues. Uh, She used to let them, I'm not even joking. This is 100% true. She used to let them sleep on the kitchen table. What? Why on the table? Why do they even want to be on the table? they just wanted to be on the table. <laughs> no, it's quite a common thing. When Gus was a puppy, I once came really? into the kitchen and found him asleep on the kitchen table. What, because they just like being elevated? I don't know. I guess he just thought, oh, that's a nice spot. I'm not sure. But anyway, her dogs um, have always just been allowed on the kitchen table and they've always been gross and smelly and farty and just like not <laughs> sleek and beautiful. And so I think that's why I'm not into them. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> The only beagle I know is one that's overweight and smelly and just yeah. kind of like lounging around. I don't know. Yeah. Like, like, what happened what to the big like. sprightly? What are they bred for? Oh, well, if you turn to page oh, 68. Oh, no, my textbook's on my shelf. I didn't get it down. Don't worry, I have my textbook handy. Um, for what everyone listening, say? <laughs> for everyone listening, I got Kitty a dog breed book for her birthday, and then I also got myself the same one so that we could have matching textbooks for the podcast <laughs> because that's the kind of friendship that we have. Okay, I have to say, inside the book, the pictures of the beagles in here are so cute. Like, these aren't overweight. Their eyes aren't even that droopy, actually, and their ears are so nice. Uh, actually, I wish yeah. you could actually look. Um, I'll send you a picture on WhatsApp, hold on. Um, But very, very cute. So in the book, it says, um, beagles, so they're actually used as hunting dogs and they're Mm -hmm. supposed to be like special hunting dogs because they're smaller than like a harrier or a fox terrier or something. Um, But then they've become popular as a companion in the United States. Oh my god, due to their pleasing temperament. I didn't know they had a pleasing temperament. I've always thought that they were like barky and aloof. No, I knew they were good. Oh, I just don't think... I think it's the ears. Something is not right here. Oh, I quite like the ears. They're like Dumbo ears. Interesting, their affection level isn't very high. Yes, that's what I mean. They're supposed to be aloof, like not really like loving. But then so are Borzois. I, don't, I really think it's just like your own personal dog. Sure. Although I know pits are supposed to be like really loyal and loving. I don't know. Oh, I feel like I would have to have a beagle to really say. Um, yeah, but because of their pleasing temperament and compact size, beagles are often used as therapy dogs and bomb and drug detection dogs. Oh, I did know that. Mm. And actually, when I was researching a little bit for this episode, I did find an article that they're, they've just hired a bunch of dogs for sniffing out this like illegal pork in airports because there's some hog disease going around and they've hired a bunch of beagles to help sniff it out which is quite cute 
Oh, that's very interesting. I know, because we love a working dog. Yeah, I love a working dog. I also just think sniffer dogs are just, like, incredible. You know they have oh to take God. breaks, like like a proper job, because they, they like, it's so <laughs> intense, the sniffing. Isn't that that is my favourite thing. <laughs> I love imagining a dog's work day, where they, like, wake up and they're like, oh, i got to go to work today. Yeah, and they have, like, shifts, shifts. Ooh, yeah. Sorry. I'm very salivary. I'm very sorry, everyone listening. I do have a terrible <laughs> Can yeah. you hear Angel? So, She's snoring. No, I can't hear her. Oh, I wonder if the microphone will pick it up. I wish my dog was that, that relaxed. My dog is literally sitting on the corner of my bed, quivering as in, Aww. as if she's sort of like, I don't know, just like, I don't know what's wrong with her. I think she's hungry. Yeah, she's just probably just, anticipating dude, food. Oh yeah, she's acting weird. I hate it when she does that though, like sitting there quivering. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're just doing that, you're just trying to get attention. <laughs> God, um, really I do have to say she's got like diarrhea and she's not feeling well. <gasps> she's fine. I'm a really good dog owner. Don't worry, guys. You are a great dog owner. What were you saying? Oh, um, whenever I think of beagles, I always think of um, you know, in Gilmore Girls <laughs> and Jason who has Cyrus. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! And it's fucking weird because does it like yeah. sit and face the wall the whole time, or like it doesn't do tricks or something like that? It does Fucking tricks, weird. apparently. So in the show, Jason's like, oh, yeah, Cyrus was trained by, like, Bo- what does he say? Like, trained by Buddhist monks or something. And he oh. knows, like, a little to the left and turn around. So, like, when Lorelai and Jason are making out, <laughs> he does the signal for turn around. And Cyrus just, like, spins on the spot and faces the wall. <laughs> That's what I think of when I think of beagles. Okay, well, there's another reason I don't like them, then I fucking hate Jason. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's like my worst character. <laughs> Actually, no, Max Medina's no. worse. <gasps> really? Wait, do you mean as in Lorelai's boyfriends or like all yeah. of the men? No, uh, Lorelai's boyfriends. Oh, Lorelai's boyfriends. Mm. I don't mind Max. Oh, it's Max Medina. Oh, I fucking hate Max Medina. Because he's so fucking annoying and he's so needy. Like, be cool. He's just not cool. Oh, well, my worst character is Dean. I fucking hate Dean. Well, that's a stupid comment. How can it be Dean? Dean is so nice to her. No, I've, I'm sorry. I hate Dean. He's so like... I'm oh. sorry. You hate Dean over Logan. Yeah, I hate Dean over Logan. Okay, I've got to go. We've got to turn off this podcast. <laughs> no. We can't be friends. Yeah, I, can't. I I'm hate sorry. Logan. That's actually upset me. I'm sorry. I hate Logan. I like Dean up until the point where he says I love you to Rory and then he gets mad about it. Then I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, fuck off. It's not all about you. He's a fucking kid. He's you know? too needy. Like, you no, know, yeah, I know he is needy, but like he's a kid, and like Rory could have handled that situation better. I think she handled it just fine. No, she was annoying too. I mean, I no, mean, granted, oh, he I was hate annoying, Rory, but don't like, get me wrong. Dean is great. I love Dean. He's a great character. Nope, I hate Dean. Luke and Lorelai are my favorite, and Mrs. Kim. What, Mrs. Kim? <laughs> no, you're missing out. The best characters are Jess, and then. Um, oh, obviously, yeah. Jeans, what's his name? I can't remember his name in the show, but Thingy's character, who dates Thingy for a while. Who's Thingy and who's Thingy? <laughs> he dates um, Lane. Do you remember oh, he's in the band? Oh, oh, what's oh. his name? You, <laughs> you mean Seth Cohen? Yeah, Seth Cohen. Oh, okay, yeah, Dave. He, yeah, excellent oh, favourite Dave, character. Nice. Wish he was in he, it more. Yeah, he's a fucking great character. Yeah, he could have had a spin-off show. Yeah. No, the oh, spin-off right. shows don't work. Some of the worst episodes in Gilmore Girls, we would have to watch Jess go to California, and it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. We oh, don't do yeah. Show. Agree. Um, anyway, oh my god, so a crossover of two of our favourite things, a beagle and Gilmore Girls. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's who I think of. And every time I think about training a dog, I think of Cyrus, and I always think, oh, that's too far. <laughs> Well, whenever I think of Beagles, I think of a much lesser known film called... What? Um, Cats and Dogs. I knew you were going to say that. Well, the main character's a fucking yeah, Beagle. I, yeah, I know. I haven't seen that in so long. But oh, when I was so researching... <gasps> mm-hmm. um, oh, sorry. sorry, when I was researching Bark Like an Egyptian, a scene from that comes up. Yeah, I bet. Because I think they, they talk go about the history of cats. Or something. Yeah, they go through the history of cats, and they're saying how it was actually like dogs that were worshipped, and cats changed history or something. Hey, I so remember. I bet you love the um. So the beagle's the main dog, but then he his like mentor. You would love that dog, wouldn't you? Who's his mentor? 
Um, it's kind of like, I'm not a good dog. dog breed, so I can't really like, it's like a very leggy, white, maybe like German Shepherd mix. <gasps> oh, I love it already. I'm researching. Cats, what is it called? Cats and dogs? Cats and dogs, yeah. All I see is the fucking beagle. Oh, that beagle has some serious forehead wrinkles. I'm not a fan of that. I fucking hate films where dogs talk. I agree. The white thing that's like quite large, shepherdy looking, is a mastiff. I'm not sure which mastiff. I think it's no, a Peruvian No, I'm mastiff. sending you a picture. It's not a mastiff. It's not. It's not. And it's no. in the film. It's not. Butch. His name is Butch. But do you know what I mean? I feel like you'd like, if you saw him at the dog park, oh. you'd want him. Yeah, because he looks like Roscoe. Mm. But like a leggy version. Yeah. Also, yeah, I mean, the face actually... is like Roscoe. What's actually Oh, upsetting? it's an Anatolian shepherd. Oh, interesting. Yeah, new breed. What's interesting about that film is that the main character, the beagle, is called Lou. Lou. How do we feel about that name? Fucking upsetting. Yeah, don't like it. Oh, oh I guess if you're going to name That's any dog... That's what Nellie and Ellen's going to call her dog. Because it's Louise. Oh, Louise. Lou. Come on, Lou. Lou. Ugh. Actually, it doesn't sound... <laughs> Come on, Lou. <laughs> God, oh, she's so annoying. Um, <laughs> you know what else I hate is um, my foster dog's name. I don't even know if I said it. Her name's Angel. Do you know what that reminds me of? What? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That's what someone else said too. Have you not seen it? He's fit. Well, yeah, but I don't think she's named <laughs> after him. I no, feel obviously, like obviously it's a very common shitty name, but I'm just saying it's what it reminds me of. Well, I feel like if a man who is else said Angel, that? Who have you been speaking to about this dog? Everyone at work. <laughs> And who said they thought that too? Uh, Daniela. She's from Sweden. Interesting. Well, we should probably be best friends because we're obviously on the same way. Yeah. She's very cool. I like her. Um, okay, cool. Just wait, what was I going to say about Angel? Us. No, I feel like the name Angel for a guy is cool, but I feel like for a girl, it's like a stripper name. Yeah, it's not cool for a guy. And well, Angel in Buffy the Vampire Slayer is cool. Yeah, he's a cool guy, but like his name is stupid. <laughs> Okay, well, I have to say, can wow, we play I'm a game? Wow, I'm so negative. Oh, yeah, I love a game. Okay, so the game is, imagine, well, picture, look at the pictures I've sent you of Angel, and we're going to rename her. So if you had to name this dog, what would you name her? Oh, I'm really bad at this fucking game. Oh, well, I, I think it's really fun. For everyone listening, she's a Pyrenean mountain dog crossed with, not a pit. I thought she was crossed with a pit, but she's not. She's crossed with some kind of hound because she's so leggy. Oh my gosh, she's seriously snoring. She's got droopy eyes. She has very droopy eyes, but I don't know if that's because she's a puppy and she just has all the puppy excess skin. She's caramel and white. Um, yeah, she's Pyrenean colouring. You know what I mean? Where it's like creamy, Yeah, but well, some also people like don't know white, what that means. White. Well, look it up. If they're a dog lover, they should know. And she also has like um, black patches on her snout. She has a black nose, not a pink nose, so Kitty's happy. Mm-hmm. I just seems I just don't know. She's kind of piggy with her little pink paws. Yeah, I think Lulu is nice. Quite nice. Oh my god, she's dreaming. Oh, you're so cute. Um, well, should I feel like we should add an Instagram highlight of our dogs? No. Um, yeah, I just don't want my dog to get too famous. I love naked dog skin. <laughs> really? So I would love to stroke that tummy that's been oh. shaved. <laughs> I don't like it, sorry. Florence doesn't have any hair on her tummy and it is my favourite part. Oh, I mean, that's cute. I like very, very fine hair, but th- there's literally no hair. I don't like there's it because it's no like rubbery. But I can't believe they didn't tell me she'd just been spayed. Because she still has like, not stitches, but like a wound. Yeah, but jeans, I feel like this is just highlighting the fact that these dogs just need, they just, they just don't, there are no, there's no space in the shelters. I know, I know. I really can't be critical because, like, I don't run a dog shelter and a foster program. So, like, I, I can't be critical. They just need to get these dogs into homes. I know. I just feel like I would do it differently, but maybe my way wouldn't work and there'd probably be things wrong with the way I did it. So, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be critical. It's a great thing they're doing. Bloody wonderful that they gave me a welcome package. It just was a pain to carry. <laughs> What does it, oh god, sorry, that wasn't the right sound. What does it say in the welcome package? We know, we've got to be talking about beagles. Oh, sorry, we're going so off topic. Okay, so I have a story about a beagle. (laughs) Great. What's your story about a beagle? Okay, so I was researching. Um, My favourite thing to do, even if it's not related to the podcast, I just search dog news because I'm just bloody obsessed with dogs. And I found this story. Well, I've got something to tell you. Oh, what? Do you have, do you, oh god, I'm actually annoying myself. Do you use Apple News? (laughs) 
I do, but it doesn't work. Because every day for me, there's a new dog section. Yeah, but I have it on my thing. I selected that I only want to hear about dogs and it's still only giving me the fucking top stories. I don't want to hear about seven Britons among 157 killed in Ethiopian Airlines crash. No, give well, me that, I need to read that article because that is quite intense though. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't talk about planes because I'm going on one on my, tomorrow and I'm scared. Oh yeah, we won't um, talk about it, but I am fascinated with them. Oh, oh actually, actually there crashes. is one. Oh, like plane disappearances. Oh God, don't even. Okay, yeah, so sorry. what were you saying? <laughs> there is actually some dog news, but I feel like it never comes up. It always shows me stuff I don't want to see. What dog news were you going to talk about in the first place? Oh, sorry. God, we're going so off topic today. So I found an article and it's about this beagle in Melbourne, Australia. And Mm -hmm. it's actually quite sad. So the beagle has a litter of puppies, but during the birth, she loses them. Like they all die. And obviously she's like, yeah, I don't know how. It doesn't say. Um, But she's really depressed. And then she like adopts this possum. Is it possum or possum? (gasps) It's possum. And I've seen this. Oh, because in the video, the Australian man said, maybe it's just his accent, he said possum. Um, Yeah, but now they're best friends. Have you seen the video? The possum is literally on the beagle's back and they just like walk around. Did I send this to you? No. Oh, well, I watched this recently. Oh, well, why didn't you bring that to the table? Yeah, so cute. I just don't like (laughs) possums, but so cute. Although, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be quite honest and brutally honest here. When I watched the video, I was like, oh, the beagle's enjoying this. (laughs) <laughs> well you just thought it was like the possum because was clinging onto it the video, and the beagle was like what's no, on my back so the the possum looks terrified of life in general and the beagle I felt was like not running away from it but like being do you know what I mean like oh fuck off well I mean apparently the owner says that the possum like sleeps in the trees and then comes down to hang out with the beagle. And apparently, the beagle's called Molly. Apparently, she like waits by the door and like is always looking up into the tree to see if the possum's coming down. That is cute. Well, is it because she's scared of the possum or because she wants the possum? <laughs> I don't know now. I don't know. Yeah, but this possum is just like riding around on her back all day. It's kind of cute. It's so cute. I love animals that are like different species of friends. Oh my God, I love it, yeah. But that was all I had to say about beagles. That's the only thing I could find apart from the hog disease Mm -hmm. so we've had hog diseases possums on backs talking dogs i fucking hate when they make films where the dogs actually talk it's so stupid yeah same a great example of a film that does a dog movie well is 101 dalmatians live action oh my god did you love watching it i did i really 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 loved it if you're in america 101 dalmatians the live action movie is on netflix so watch it I think they did it so well and I love that the dogs don't talk because it's like a real life dog. It's not fucking stupid. Yeah. <gasps> Sorry, something else I have to say about dogs fucking talking. I sent you this on Instagram. Oh my God, that annoyed me so much. I, I Since you said it last episode about how owners are like putting their own captions as if it's the dog talking and they say who man. And I've just oh. like, now I keep noticing it. <laughs> And it's, it's just so horrendous. <laughs> it is horrendous. It really pisses me off. And I found one example that I just have to share with you. I think I took screenshots of it. Um, it's this wait, account. did you send it to me? Yeah, I'll send it to you. I just need to find it. But it's this oh, wait, account. We're not talking about. We're not talking about the one that you did send me. No, it was a different one because it was an okay. Instagram story, and I knew you wouldn't see it I because know, it didn't have that much we- time left. We do need to speak about the one you sent me. Oh, what's the one I sent you again? It's a video. It's, oh, I think my dog just found it. Oh, lovely. Uh, the one you sent me is this dog, like, we're next to a, a water hydrant that's flowing, and, oh, it's got captions coming up on the video being like, what is this? Or like, uh, human, are you seeing this? And like, what the fuck? Oh, I was actually upset. I wanted to report it for inappropriate <gasps> content because it was upsetting the world. <laughs> I just don't understand what makes you think you have to do that and it just it really really annoys me because it's like when you're typing that out autocorrect must correct it and you must have to go back and type something instead of something yeah it's just more effort to make your dog sound like an idiot it's also just stupid like dogs are more intelligent than that you know they're not actually thinking that fuck off i feel like it's just like they're not two-year-old dogs are i think more intelligent than two-year-olds and have more of a you know emotional intelligence they're not do you know what I mean like don't 
baby also, them. Also, like, two-year-olds don't speak like... Not all two-year-olds speak like that either. Oh, it just really annoys me. Like, can you... And also, it's like, if the dog was... If you're running the account as if it was the dog talking, I don't think that a dog would type, like, with, not with... You know, it wouldn't yeah. type W I F. It would type W I T H, even if it did have a little speech impediment where it said with. Agree. Oh God, it's just horrendous. <laughs> so what is this other thing? Oh, it's just an Instagram story, and it's like, um, it's called We the Dogs N Y C, and every day someone takes over the Instagram stories, and it's like their dog and their day in New York City. But this one woman has this puppy on. And they're like out mm-hmm. in New York City and the captions are really horrendous. It says, <laughs> it's them in Macy's and it says, Macy's still got the original escalate. It's like, it's spelled wrong. Escalators made from wood. Upstairs they got whiffwood steps too. What is whiffwood? Oh, I don't know. Fucking hell. And then they're outside Waffle and Dingus and it says, I smell something. You smell something? Oh upsetting me why why do that does your dog talk like that because honestly this dog looks like it's like in the picture it looks like can we just go home now it looks like pissed off it probably is i feel like we haven't discussed something very crucial that's happened in my life recently oh my god what that happened yesterday Oh my god, what happened yesterday? Oh, you do know. So guys, just to put it in context, I'm extremely, extremely single and it's very upsetting. <gasps> and I've been on Hinge for... <laughs> yes! <laughs> I've been on Hinge for ages and uh, I said to Gina the other day, I was like, oh, this is fucking shit in England. Everyone in everyone in everyone on Hinge is such a loser. <laughs> so I said to Gina, listen, you just take my account and do what you want with it. So she <laughs> took control of my account and she... Set my location to be New York City so she can find me a nice American. Oh, and I had so much fun swiping through people. Anyway, but actually it turns out I didn't make that many matches. Did I? Oh, well, I actually haven't checked since I did my liking. Yeah, well, I've had to change it back to London. Oh, no. Kids. I know, because I need to go on a proper date. Anyway. Oh. I fucking matched. <laughs> With someone you guys probably all fucking follow on Instagram. Yeah. I don't follow him because he's fucking annoying. That's interesting that you say that because I've heard from a lot of people because I met him and I thought when I met him, he's a little bit strange. Are you going to say who it is? Yeah, it's that stupid guy from The Doggist. Yeah, so it's The Doggist photographer, which I think is so funny because I was on your Author and photographer, Gina. (laughs) He's a what? Author. Oh, author. I'm so sorry. Yeah, because I went to the book signing. Um, when I was on your hinge, I was just like liking people, mostly people that had dogs. And then I didn't really realize who it was until you sent it to me because you matched with him. Oh my God. <laughs> I think it's so funny. But yeah, when I met him, I went to his dog signing, which was in Washington Square Park. And like, I was there because I used to sell pet insurance for a marketing and sales company. It was shit but I was there and he was just like so socially awkward and he was like hi guys thanks for coming um it's great that we all love dogs uh, I'll sign your books if you want and if you want a picture like just let me know write it down on a piece of paper and put your dog handle so I can tag it it was just like so unemotional and I just feel like he didn't seem like a dog lover you know like if it was you and I having a dog beat up we'd be all over the dogs we'd be like oh my god there's a ballsy oh my god there's a dalmatian but he just like didn't care yeah weird and I've heard that from someone else I don't remember who it was but they were like yeah he's just like he, apparently he doesn't even like dogs well that's fucking weird but you know it's upsetting I could have been Mrs. Doggist you could have if he wasn't a weirdo yeah well it reflects poorly on me that i matched with him so i would just like apologize but um (laughs) yeah that's just some news in my dating life yeah but if anyone else would like to date the doggist he is on hinge so get on it i thought you were gonna say to me if anyone would like to date kitty and i was like (laughs) she's giving me a shot She's giving me a shout out. That too. If anyone has a ranch with some horses and some dogs and you're in America, please let me know. Message us on That's So Fetch podcast on Instagram. And we'll Serious set you up inquiries with Kitty. only. Yeah, and of the 12 people listening, send this message to your brother's <laughs> uncle. No, not uncle. <laughs> not your uncles. Your brothers. <laughs> And your sons? No, I'm, I'm joking. I don't. Don't. We're not. We're not sort of. What's it yes. called? 
We are. We're pimping you out. <laughs> Do you have a dog of the week? <laughs> Gina, are you fucking kidding me? No, yeah, the dog of the week. My dog of the week is the beagle I saw in the street today who wanted to be friends with Beautiful Frise. And he is my dog of the week because he was blessed and he was so sweet on the other side of the road. All right. <laughs> okay. My dog of the week is um, Cyrus. My dog of the week is my... F- oh, I was going to say it was your fucking foster dog. Um... <gasps> No. Who's Cyrus? Oh yeah, classic. Oh, that's yeah. funny. We we one day need to do an episode on Paul Anker. Oh, a hundred percent. I love Paul Anker. Cute, well, cute, I don't cute know. dog. I hate that breed. <laughs> cute dog though. Do you know the Lassie dog? Yeah. What type of collie is that? This is what I don't get about collies, and I've never really admitted it. Isn't a Lassie dog just a collie? Like it's just a collie. Yeah. Oh, Am I right? Mean? No. That's wrong. It's not a Shetland sheepdog. It is a, it's just a collie. It's not a border collie, it's a collie. Oh, okay, well let's look that up later. Um, just cause I'm looking at a picture of one I, and it's on the back spine of my book, which is on my bookshelf. And I want to do a collie part two cause I want to talk about them. Oh yeah, I would quite like that as well. Just because I have an actual infatuation with collies. I know, they are amazing dogs. They're so beautiful and so intelligent. Okay, well should we wrap this up? Yeah, well this is quite nice. It's been a very short, taster episode we haven't rambled on we've been clear and concise kitty we've gone off on a tangent like every other sentence yeah i know but you know that's people like that i feel like it's relevant to the title though you know coffee and beagle like we're having coffee chats it's just like if we're at a coffee shop talking about dogs and beagles are the main breed yeah yeah i think it's been relevant Mm, in other news my plumber that came over this morning was like fit oh really Mm mm-hmm why would he look like? Blonde and like quite big, like quite tall, quite chunky. Oh, interesting. Is he coming back? Some sort of, I don't know, probably. Yeah, he was like Eastern European or something like that. Oh, well, what an exciting morning for you. Okay, um, well, thanks for listening. If you guys would like to follow us on Instagram, it's at That's So Fetch Podcast. And make sure you're subscribing, rating, reviewing, and tell a fellow dog lover friend. And don't forget to tell your single friends about me. Oh, <laughs> yeah about kitty and about who oh the doggist no he doesn't need a girlfriend gina no guys focus your efforts on me not the fucking elias from the doggist (laughs) he didn't even message me if you guys want an update i didn't get a message from him so rude he just invited kitty to start the chat which i hate like fucking say hi okay thanks for listening bye i love you guys thanks for listening bye